Welcome to Earth Science. I am Mrs. Arnold, and in today's video, we will learn about science and what makes it different from other disciplines. I really love science, and I hope that by the end of this course, you will leave for an appreciation for science. In science, it is very important that we use evidence. To this effect, scientists are going to do um, experimentation and investigations, which we will discuss in a later video, to gather data and to make observations. In science, we aren't trying to prove a hypothesis right. We are trying to falsify it. So that means when designing experiments, you want to ask, how can I prove this wrong? Science does not care about your personal accounts or your personal beliefs. The goal in science is to be unbiased and to look at what the evidence is saying and not to try to make the evidence fit a belief you may have. A cool thing about science is that it is tentative, which is a term we will talk about in further detail later in this video. But that basically means that when we are presented with new data, then previous knowledge must be changed. One example of that occurring in Earth science is when the evidence of the heliocentric astronomical model that is that the earth revolves around the sun overwhelmed the evidence for the geocentric model. Lastly, not all explanations are equally valid. Some are just better than others because they explain more observations. They work better. Um, an example here of something that will not be a good scientific, um, not a valid scientific explanation would be the flat earth theory because it is not a scientific theory at all, but a conspiracy theory um, versus all of the facts that support the fact that our earth is round. So that leads nicely into something that you can say irks my taters, which is a poor understanding of what a law is and what a theory means in science. Students have a few misconceptions about this term, which I will discuss here and also in a separate video. So notice here that I wrote scientific theory. That is because in everyday usage, we use theory like how scientists use the word hypothesis. You may say, for example, I have a theory about who ate the last cookie in the cookie jar. But in reality, you have a guess, a hypothesis. In science, a theory is much stronger than a guess. I will go into further detail about why on the next slide, but on this slide, I want to discuss the differences and similarities between laws and theories. First, the similarities. Both are the results of repeated successful predictions. That means that both are produced from experimentation. Okay, so I'm going to write experimentation or you can write experiments there in the middle of the Venn diagram. A misconception that students have is that a theory can graduate and become a law. If you learn nothing else this semester, I want you to know that that doesn't happen. This Venn diagram shows us that theories and laws serve different purposes. A theory is going to explain why phenomena occur while a law describes what phenomena happen. Okay, so these two things are doing two different things. That is why a theory does not become a law because it is doing its own thing. 
a theory is going to be broader than a law. So law then is going to be narrower. A theory is broader because it covers more things. That is what the term broader is referring to. Um, it is explaining why the phenomenon is occurring. The scientific law, on the other hand, is describing what is happening. It is going to focus on specific conditions, okay? Our definition for a scientific theory is an explanation based on many observations during repeated investigations. Let's break that down. We can tell that it is much stronger than a guess because it has been tested many times. That is what repeated investigations mean. Also, it is based on many observations many right there, many observations, not just one. It is not based on hunches. So it's not a hunch or a guess. There's going to be a lot. I'm going to underline that a lot of evidence. In facts behind a scientific theory. A scientific law is a principle that describes the behavior of a natural phenomenon. Like I said, this is usually expressed as an equation. So one rule of thumb is that if it can be written as an equation, then it is probably a law. An example here that we will go into further detail later um, in our other video is Boyle's Law. Example of a scientific theory that we would go into further detail is the theory of plate tectonics. Please forgive my sloppy handwriting. <laughs> the goals of science are going to be three of them. So the first goal of science is to investigate and understand, whoops, hit the eraser by accident. Investigate and understand the natural world. Okay. The second goal is to explain events in the natural world. So explain events in the natural world. Our third goal is to use explanations to make useful predictions. So use explanations to make useful predictions. In order to be a, in order to be science, something has to fit six criteria. So we are going to go into each of these in greater depth later. But the first of the six criteria is um, consistent. So we have to have consistency. The next one is that it has to be observable. The third one is that it has to be natural. Fourth, predictable. 
fifth testable in the last one, but surely not the least, is tentative. Okay, so when we say that something is consistent, that means that the observations are repeatable. So we can repeat our observations. So whenever we um, do the experiment, we get approximately the same result. We get similar results. So the results through and hopefully controlled experimentation which we will talk about further later on. The results through controlled experimentation are approximately the same. I'm going to abbreviate approximately. Okay, so if we look over here at the targets which are serving to model this, we can see that this fourth target right here is not consistent at all. The results are all over the board. So we do not want our data in a scientific um, investigation or experiment to look like this. We want it to look something more like this or this. So we need that consistency in our results. Okay, science also has to be observable through one or more of the five senses. So you guys should know these. Sight, touch, taste, smell, um, and hearing. Okay. Um, some things in science are unobservable without the help of microscopes, telescopes, Geiger counters. These instruments help extend our senses. So scientific instruments extend our senses, okay? So some examples of scientific instruments that I've mentioned were microscopes, telescopes, which has, help us see very far objects, um, in Geiger counters, they are helpful because you can observe radioactivity then, okay? So the picture here, um, we, through the help of new scientific technology and instruments, we are able to see more than what we can see with our, um, with our regular normal census, okay? So right here we have this ant, and over here we have the ant um, using a scanning electron microscope. So if you take a look of a ant, at an ant under a scanning electron microscope, you will be able to see further details like the fact that the ant has a, a compound eye. That is something that we cannot see without the help of um, an instrument. So using instruments in science has enabled science to progress because then we are able to observe things that are either too far away to see without the help of a telescope or too small to see without the help of a microscope. Science also has to be natural. So that means that a natural cause 
must be used to explain why, oops, sorry about that, why or how the naturally occurring event event happens. There can be no supernatural explanations. So what I mean by no supernatural explanations is if you look at this picture of the Northern Lights, you cannot explain why those northern lights happen by saying that they occur because of um, the God's warring in the heavens, okay? You have to come up, you have to find the natural explanation behind the phenomenon. So in this case, the reason why the northern lights occur is because um, the gas particles in the thermosphere are colliding with the charged particles that are being released by the sun. That excites the particles and then they release light as they um, calm down. Science has to be predictable. So the natural cause of the naturally occurring event can be used to make specific conditions that can be tested. So the natural cause of the naturally occurring event can be used, can be used to make specific predictions. that can, whoops, that keeps happening, be tested. Okay? So because every time on earth, when you have something in your hands and you let go, it falls to the ground um, due to gravity, like that, that's something that is predictable. It is not that, oh, ever so often it floats. It's not ever, you know, it's something that happens consistently and it's predictable. Okay, so it has to be predictable. A um, phenomenon also has to be testable through using um, the scientific methods. So it must be testable through scientific methods. And it's essential that we use controlled experiments. So in this illustration, you can see a test happen, an experiment happen. Um, the question is whether or not a sparrow song is genetically encoded. So is it in its genes? Does it just know to sing it from its DNA? Or does it learn it from its parents? So what you can, a way you can test that is that you put a sparrow to be raised by birds that aren't sparrows. If the baby sparrow grows up and sings the usual sparrow song, then you can say that the song that a sparrow sings is genetically encoded. However, if the song is learned, then the sparrow, the baby sparrow, will grow up to sing um, the same song as the birds that raised it and not the sparrow's song. So that is a good test. 
Science is also tentative, which means that it is subject to change. This means that scientific theories are subject to revision and correction. And that is not a bad thing. That does not mean that the theory is not to be um, taken seriously, okay? A lot of times what happens is that um, people do experimentations and they actually find stronger evidence that supports the theory, or they find evidence that helps them understand a certain aspect of the theory better. So that is how the um, theory is improved through revision and through um, you know, testing. Sometimes, however, um, you know, theories can be proven wrong. So scientific theories are subject to revision and correction, even to the point Okay, um, scientific theories have been modified due to new data. So that modification is um, the revision that's happening and the development of scientific technology. The development of scientific technology can oftentimes, like I said earlier, with observations, um, extend our senses. And so we can better get a better understanding of the natural world. An example about how, um, example of a scientific theory being proven wrong is the miasma theory of disease. That was the theory that diseases were caused by bad air. It was replaced by the germ theory of disease, which is that diseases are caused by microorganisms. Now, this did not happen all at once. This took place over many years. It took many scientists making observations for years in order for the germ theory of disease to be widely accepted as correct, okay? So science is pretty cool in that way, in that it's not going to become a widely accepted theory until it has been tested many times, until there are many observations and the evidence for it is just overwhelming, and then it's widely accepted. So it's not like someone can just walk in and say like, oh, I, hey, I believe this happens from that. No. People don't just accept that face value. It's tested over and over again by many, many different people. And that's what makes it a theory. It's explanations that have not been disproven and just have been proven to be correct over and over again or have been um, even corrected to be revised, I should say, to be even stronger through further experimentation. So for our practice, we are going to do science versus not science. Which of the following is a scientific statement and which one is not? A, green plants will grow towards a light source or B, walking under a ladder will cause bad luck. So we want to use the idea of consistency to explain why one of these is a scientific statement. And of course, 
using the consistency, we can say that A is a scientific statement because um, we can uh, consistently observe this phenomenon, which is called um, positive phototropism, which means that the plant will grow towards the light. If you sit a plant in your window, you will see that it starts to lean towards the sunlight. And if you turn that pot, then the plant will go back to lean towards the, the sunlight after a few days or hours, okay? And the reason why B isn't a um, science is because people have different ideas of what bad luck is, okay? Um, and the other thing is, is walking on a ladder would cause bad luck. Um, that doesn't consistently happen. It's not that like if you walk on a ladder, you immediately be eaten by crocodiles or whatever, or you immediately have something fall on your head. Like it, it's not a consistent thing. And like I said, how, what is bad luck? People don't have a, a consistent consistent definition of what bad luck is. For some people, getting out of bed, bed is good luck, and for other people, good luck is only winning the lottery or something. Which of the following is a scientific statement and which one is not? Some plants eat meat, or extraterrestrial beings have visited, visited Earth. Using the idea of observability, which, um, how can we determine which of the above statement is a scientific one? Obviously, this is going to be some plants eat meat. We can see plants like pitcher plants in Venus flytraps eating bugs. And no one has ever seen aliens. I'm sorry. And our last one we're going to do is which of the following is a scientific statement and which one is not? A, green plants convert sunlight into energy. B, the northern lights are due to supernatural beings warring in the heavens for the favor of beautiful women. Um, with using the idea of natural, how can we determine which statement above is the scientific one? In statement B, they are using uh, supernatural beings, which is a supernatural explanation to describe the northern lights. And we do know the natural cause of this natural phenomenon. So that means then that A is the natural explanation. Okay, so what did we learn today? Today we learned what is science. We learned about the six criteria of science. 